this is Laura GB and this is a look at the new feature import text using examples included in the August 2020 Power BI desktop update. So here we are in Power BI desktop and the first thing to show you is how to turn on the feature. So we go to the file menu and we click on options and settings and options. And in the options window, we click on preview features. And in the preview features, we need to tick on import text using examples. And like some features, this might require a restart. So let's click OK onto there. And let's have a go at importing a text file. So if I go to get data, click text CSV pick my file and click open. Here we have the dialog box for importing text and there's a new button in the bottom left hand corner, extract table using examples. And if I click there, it opens a dialog showing a preview of our text and a table to type in our examples. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename column one to be journey date and then I'm going to put in the 22nd of August at the top there is my first value so I'm going to put in to here and as you type it in it gives you suggestions matching what we've already put there so there we go I can click on 2208 2020 and when I press return that's not enough examples for it to work out the pattern. So it just lists me the data. So the next one down, I'm going, well, let's go for the next date, which is the 21st. So we go for the 21st and there you are. It gives me some help again. And I'm going to double click on that date, press return. And it goes, well, okay, now I've worked it out. So now I've worked out a pattern for this one. It's I can scroll down through the data and get the dates. Next column. I'm going to put in destination. Now, from the first one up there, I've got the value London. So under here, I'm going to double click and type in London. And as soon as I start to type it in, it starts to give me some help. So there we are. Click on London. Press return. And because it's worked out a pattern here, it's worked out values that match the same pattern. So I get my London, Bristol, London, Birmingham, etc. Then we're going to go into a third column and we're going to put in distance. And on this, I'm going to put in 118 to match the distance in the top one and click return. And there you are, it's calculated the values to match, even including a 62 for the shorter value. Okay, so they're the three columns I want. I'm going to click transform data so I can have a look at the Power Query it wrote behind the scenes. So here we are in Power Query. And if we look on the right hand side, it's written a complete set of steps. And here's the source, the original text file. And it goes through a pretty standard, a pretty standard idea here for people who've done it by hand in the past. You add an index column. You add a conditional column to decide which is the row that shows the top of your data. And you fill in those so you've got them all the way through. And then it's grouped them so that there we are. We've got all of our different groups. We can now get rid of our start index column because we don't need it anymore. And there we go. We've got the data into five blocks. And then it's pretty standard stuff to start splitting by delimiters. So there we are. We get the date out. We get the distance out. The next step is a little different. It's worked out some clever things along the way. So it's worked out to use a before delimiter. So there we are. It gives us those and then it picks up the rename that we did. It does it all as one step, which is nice and then does a quick change type to make sure all the types are correct. So our steps can be divided into two big chunks. 
One is to decide how big the block's going to be. And the second is to decide how to then split those blocks into separate columns. The bit that fascinates me is how it decides how big the block is. And if I go back to that third step, if you look, it's gone for up in the M code at the top here. You can see it's gone for if any of the first characters. So that's where you get position of any and in the squiggly brackets zero to nine. So that's basically the position of the number is zero, i.e. the line starts with a number. Then give me the number else give me null because it's worked out that the first row in my blocks. So row one there, row five, row nine will give me the divider to tell me what to do. So that's worked it out based on looking at the pattern and going, oh, look, they all start with a number and none of the other rows do. That's quite clever. So then I decided to, well, do you know what? Let's try it with some very similar files with the same data, but structured slightly differently. So my first text file is going to start with the word date before that date and see how that works. And then I'm going to move around so that actually the destination is the first row. So let me just load those and then we'll talk through it. So now we have our three different examples. If we go to my second example and we go back and look at the source, you can see we have the word date before it. And when I get to the third step, the add in the conditional column, if you look, it's looking for starts with date. So that's what it's using as its feature, which means that that chunk of rows could be any length at all and they could work it out from there. So I could have had a comment block below there that lasted two or three lines. It wouldn't matter because it's looking for that date to be the first thing. Then we get on to example three. And in example three, the source, we've put the destination as the first row of the data. So my first attempt was to say, well, let's start with the date anyway, and then go back to looking at the destination. Well, you can't do that. It doesn't work. It all falls apart if you don't do the columns in the right order. So then I did the columns in the right order, the same order as the rows are. So destination, journey date, and then distance. And on the third row, sorry, third step, it can't work out a pattern that matches London to Bristol to London to Birmingham to Penzance. That doesn't work. There isn't one. So actually what it does is it goes, well, do you know what? They're all for long. OK, so we've got the London, the date row, the distance and a line of equals. And so therefore we end up with if it is a modular of four. So naught comes through, four comes through, eight comes through, etc. So this is in some ways more limited because your blocks have to be the same length, but in some ways more flexible because the first row can have anything in it and it doesn't have to match a pattern. So we've looked at three versions of the data file. I think some data file, some text files, this will work brilliantly and some text files this won't work brilliantly for because creating the pattern is not easy to do. And it's done an amazing job of getting it to this point. I know how much code that is written down the right hand side. It's following a standard pattern that we don't have to write. And the split columns by delimiters down here, it's working out some quite clever things using, I'm assuming, the same kind of engine as the column by example, which is great. And I can see this speeding up importing some text files. So I hope you've enjoyed that walk through this feature. If you haven't already, please press subscribe. Take care now.